<laughs> Senator from Alaska. Mr. President, I rise today to introduce a bill that I want to try to pass right here on the Senate floor that I believe every single senator should vote for. And if you're an American and you're watching this, if you're a Marine and you're watching this, you're going to be outraged. You're going to be you're outraged. I am outraged. But we can fix this problem. You're seeing it on TV every damn day. And here's what it is. U.S. Marines and their families are being preyed upon by unscrupulous trial lawyers. Yes? Amazing. That's happening right now. I have a bill that's called the Protect Camp Lejeune Victims Ensnared by Trial Lawyer Scams Act, or the VETS Act for short. And here's what's the background, Mr. President. And again, I really hope no one's going to come down and object to this because, uh, boy, you'd have a lot of explaining to the American people and the United States Marines. But what's happened, every American's seen it, right? You can't turn on TV anymore, CNN, Fox News, you name it. There is a trial lawyer at a minute. Here's some of them. Camp Lejeune Marines, Camp Lejeune Marine families. Have you been wrong? Now, there was a provision in the PACT Act that we all passed here that said Marines exposed to water contamination at Marine Corps Base Camp Lejeune needed to get compensated. We all supported that. I supported that. Okay? But then something happened. The trial lawyers of America kicked in, and they're grabbing all the money, and the sick Marines and their families aren't getting any. Now, look at these ads. We had a hearing on this in the Veterans Affairs Committee. Two weeks ago, I asked a question about this. The VA is getting phone calls. I'm going to talk a little bit about the VFW and the American Legion who support my bill when it passed right now. I asked the VA representative how, how much of this is happening. They estimated already a billion dollars in ads. Look at them. Every American's seen them. Billion dollars. You think the trial lawyers are spending a billion out of the kindness of their heart, out of wanting to help the United States Marines? No. I don't think so. Billion dollars already spent. Now, look, I don't blame the Marines who dial these 1 800 numbers that they see on the screen. Imagine if you're listening, hey, I'm a Marine, I'm sick, I'm going to call these guys. But I do blame the trial lawyers, and I blame a lot of my colleagues here who are using sick Marines to get rich. That's what my bill's going to change. Like I said, it's called the Veterans Act, the Vets Act, okay? Let me unpack this a little bit. Like I said, Mr. President, when the PACT Act passed, it had this legislation to compensate veterans who were sickened by toxins from water at Camp Lejeune. Very innovative, and to be clear again, we need to take care of these Marines and their families and others at Camp Lejeune. The problem, however, is when the PACT Act was passed, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, unfortunately, after agreeing to amendments, decided it was time to block all amendments. So we had no ability to amend the act. We would have made it much better. But one area where we really wanted to amend the act was that this scam by trial lawyers was predictable. Not only was it predictable, the Biden administration Justice Department predicted it. They warned us, without a cap, on contingency fees that predatory law firms would grab the lion's share of the judgments going to sick Marines and their family members. Again, the lawyers get billions. The Marines who are sick get crumbs. The Biden administration said, hey, you guys got to be aware. So what do we do? Senator Inhofe brought an amendment saying, let's put a cap. Biden administration said 10% cap on contingency fees. Sounds fair. The rumors we're hearing already is unscrupulous trial lawyers are charging 50 and 60% contingency fees. 
for sick Marines. Biden administration said cap it at 10%. We put forward an amendment that was going to cap it at 10%. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle blocked it. Hmm, I wonder what's going on there. We know they love to enrich the trial lawyers. The President of the United States, his Justice Department, asked us to address this before it would become a problem. But my colleagues chose trial lawyers over sick Marines. Okay? As a result, some Marines have already lost money because of scams. Some of these law firms are promising big paydays. Of course, they're asking for money up front, much of which they'll likely use. Others are being used without getting any money. A recent media story highlighted a Marine veteran in Kentucky whose face was used in an ad claiming he received a $35,000 settlement. In fact, he told a reporter he got 35 cents. How's that for justice? I hope John Stewart's listening, by the way. Maybe he can help us on this one. The VA, local governments, organizations, veterans groups are frantically trying to warn veterans about these scams that I just showed you. But there isn't much they can do when they see this barrage of billion dollars of advertising. Right now, it's probably up to Heck, I asked this three weeks ago. It's probably up to 1.5 billion. So they don't know. Here's what the American Legion said at a recent American Legion meeting. Whereas predatory law firms charging exorbitant fees have engaged in aggressive marketing campaigns hurting veterans, the American Legion urges Congress to provide necessary oversight for the implementation of the Camp Lejeune Justice Act to ensure veterans receive fair consideration. Sounds pretty good. American Legion, we all love them. I'm a member, by the way. By the way, I'm a U.S. Marine, too, which makes me really mad about this. So they're all supporting my bill. It's a simple bill, Mr. President. The VFWs come out in support of my bill as well. What does my bill do? Well, number one, it goes back to the Biden administration's Justice Department recommendations. So I'm, do, I'm doing right now on the Senate floor what the Biden administration Justice Department told us to do. 10% cap on contingency fees. 2% cap for filing the necessary paperwork. All right, sounds pretty fair. It's actually not that fair, because by the way, they're not doing a lot of work. The government doesn't have a defense in these lawsuits. This is like some giant litigation. Marines, if you're listening, you can do this without a trial lawyer's help. You don't need it. Don't be fooled. But they're being fooled. Okay, we know that. Everybody knows that. It was predicted it would happen. So all we're going to do is go back to the Biden administration recommendation, 10% cap on contingency fees, 2% for filing paperwork. And it does one other thing, Mr. President. And by the way, shame on the VA on this. They've been good. They're worried. But shame on the VA on this. And again, you wonder who's running this administration. Probably a lot of trial lawyers. The VA issued a reg that said the payments to the sick Marines that are being awarded would enable the VA to pay the lawyers first and then the Marines who are sick second. That's the VA's own reg. Could you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Most of the time when you hire a lawyer with a contingency fee, the client gets the money, and then you pay your lawyer. Right now, the VA wrote a reg saying, let's pay the lawyers first, and the sick Marines will get paid second. That's in a reg. So my bill is very simple. 10% cap on contingency fees. That's fair. It's what the Biden administration Justice Department recommended. 2% cap for filing paperwork. Heck, it should be 1% in my view. We're giving them a gift. And it gets rid of this outrageous reg from the VA to pay the trial lawyers before you pay the U.S. Marines who are sick. 
Simple bill, but it will have a huge impact on the sick Marines who deserve compensation. And it will let them and their families, many of whom are old, remember this is for Marines who served in the 1980s at Camp Lejeune. It will let them and their families not have to deal with these unscrupulous trial lawyers who are taking their money. This sickens me, Mr. President. I have not seen an issue that is so wrong. It is so wrong. <laughs> we saw it coming. The Biden administration, to its credit, saw it coming. We tried to fix it. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle blocked it. Okay? And so I'm just trying to fix it. The VFW wants us to fix it. The American Legion wants us to fix it. I guarantee if you're an American watching this right now, you want us to fix it. The United States Marines who sacrificed their lives for our nation want us to fix it. So it's a simple issue. I would be shocked if one of my Democratic colleagues came down here and blocked my bill. But if you do, it's going to answer the question, whose side are you on? Trial lawyers getting rich or the side of U.S. Marines who right now are getting crumbs? So, Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Judiciary Committee be discharged from further consideration of S5130 and the Senate to proceed to its immediate consideration. Further, that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and the motion to consider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Reserving the right to object. Senator from Illinois. Mr. President, let me first salute my colleague from Alaska for his service to our nation in the United States Marine Corps and to salute all the veterans for serving our nation and to tell them that as chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, the bill which the senator from Alaska introduced 13 days ago uh, is within the jurisdiction of this committee and I'm more than happy to sit down with him and to discuss uh, righting wrongs changing language, responding to this in the right way. But I have to say that the senator from Alaska did not tell us the whole story. The whole story is a little different, significantly. Back in days gone by, I was a trial lawyer. Yes, I just admitted that on the floor of the United States Senate for a living. It goes back many years. 1982 was the last time I ever practiced law. But I handled personal injury cases before federal courts and state courts in Illinois. I still have memories of that experience and enough of a memory to suggest that there are parts of the story that the senator from Alaska did not include which are really relevant to this conversation. And it's important, timely conversation. It's worth reflecting on the fact that we are dealing with Camp Lejeune, a Marine Corps base in North Carolina. It is legendary has so many historic achievements for the men and now women who are being trained to serve in the Marine Corps, who have gone through Camp Lejeune and with that training set out to defend America and to offer their lives, and many of them gave their lives in that process. And so it's understandable that Camp Lejeune has this unique place in American history, but it also has a unique place in American environmental history. You see, Mr. President, there was a determination in 1980 that the water that Marine Corps recruits and officers and their family was drinking at Camp Lejeune was, quote, highly contaminated, highly contaminated. The year was 1980. When did the government acknowledge this contamination publicly? 17 years later, 17 years with all of these Marines the officers and the recruits and their families exposed to highly contaminated water sources. You want to get angry? I get angry over that. 
contamination discovered but not disclosed for 17 years. Well, then you say, well, thank goodness they had discovered it and admitted it. That must have taken care of the problem. It didn't even get close to addressing the problem because there were all sorts of legal defenses that were raised to the families that were pleading for help. Many of them felt that birth defects in their families, neurological issues, cancers, and even deaths were attributable as highly contaminated water. And yet they couldn't recover. They couldn't recover. It took this Congress and this President, Joe Biden, to decide to change that. And so in August of this year, the Veterans Committee reported to the floor the PACT Act. And included in that PACT Act was an opportunity for the families that had been harmed and many of the members of the family may have died to finally be compensated. Well, the Camp Lejeune Justice Act corrected the situation, enabled the veterans and their families who suffer from health effects of Camp Lejeune contaminated water to bring federal lawsuits in the Eastern District of North Carolina against the federal government to seek economic and non-economic damages. Now there's an earlier approach you can use before you take this to federal court, taking it to the Navy JAG Tort Claims Unit to see if they accept your claim for damages to your family, for medical bills, lost wages, whatever it happens to be. The Navy can accept the claim, settle the case, if the Navy denies the claim or does not act within six months after you filed it, the victim has to file the lawsuit in federal court. So first there's an administrative opportunity for the Navy to pay, to say the legitimate claim, let's pay it. But if they fail to act within six months or refuse the claim, your recourse is to go to the federal district court. Now let me tell you what that entails, a lawsuit a lawsuit where you have to prove damages. Now that takes some doing in a federal court. If this were a compensation fund, you could understand where they'd say, well, you're gonna automatically recover, the question is how much. You have to prove the damages are related to the contamination of the water at Camp Lejeune. And when you've proven that there is a proximate cause, a relationship, then you have to prove up your damages. At what point do you want to do that alone in a courtroom? Perhaps you do. I wouldn't even want to do it without some advice from some group. If it were accepted that liability was already established, if it were accepted what the standard damages might be, then a legal fee should reflect that. I don't argue with that at all. I'm happy to work with the senator in that regard. But what do you do for the cases where you have to prove it? Yes, I was in Camp Lejeune. I was working there, my family was there between 1953 and 1987 or any other period of time. You have to establish all that in a court. What does it take to establish that in a court? It isn't just a simple declaration in a courtroom under oath. Depositions, interrogatories, discovery process. It's all part of a federal court case. Do you need a lawyer for that? I would recommend to anyone, don't do it alone. You could stumble fail to make something important a part of the record and not recover a penny when it's all said and done. The question is, how much should the lawyers be paid? Well, once again, hearkening back to decades ago when I did this for a living, they do it on a contingency fee. The contingency, contingency fee basically says, I get paid if you recover. If you don't recover, I don't get paid. How much do I get paid? Now that's an issue we ought to bring up, I'd say to Senator Sullivan, in conversation, how much should you get paid for this? The usual fee is a third. I charge much or less. If you were in a case with workman's compensation where you didn't have to prove liability, it might be 20%. The senator from Alaska is suggesting 2%. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but you're not going to get a competent attorney to take the case and represent any Marines at 2%. The 10%, which he referred to, and quotes the Department of Justice as his source, was for the case where there was no adversarial event in court. It's an established, a case like a compensation case where you say you automatically don't have to prove that it happened to you, just prove up your damages. That's a different case altogether. So here's what I'd like to say. I sympathize with your complaint 
the television uh, screens are being inundated with advertising from uh, trial attorneys. I don't know who they are. I couldn't name one of them uh, personally, but I know that they see this as an opportunity. Why? Because they have two years from our passage of this act to file a lawsuit. So they're anxious to get this done, move forward. And I'm sure those who were injured in the process would also like to move forward. So I'd say to the senator from Alaska, let's sit down together. The bill that you introduced almost two weeks ago is a starting point of a conversation, which should take place. It's an important one. But at the end of the day, these Marines and others who were victims of this water contamination waited for years for the opportunity for compensation. Because the United States Congress passed the PACT Act, and because President Joe Biden signed it into law, they have their day in court if necessary. That is a remarkable achievement when you consider how far back this goes. It's remarkable. We want to make sure that those Marines who were denied justice all those years leading up to the passage of that legislation have an opportunity to recover or their day in court if that's what it takes. But we also don't want to handcuff them with attorneys representing them who would accept 2% as a fee or 10% as a fee. You just don't understand, Senator, that if I'm going to prepare the case to take it into a federal court, work, good work is involved in a good case. Do some of these lawyers overcharge? You bet they do. And you and I can talk about that in the disclosure of the actual contingency fee so that Marines and their families know what they're getting into and decide for themselves based on knowledge. In terms of whether the Marine should be paid or the lawyer first, there's no question about it. The Marine should be paid, no question about it. And, and we can clarify that as well. I think that's something we should do. What I'm saying to you, I offer uh, to work with you on this uh, to make sure that we do not deny a day in court or deny adequate representation to the Marines who are seeking to recover. Let us expose those who may be exploiting the situation together I join you in an outrage against that kind of phenomena. But in the meantime, let's do something positive and bipartisan that gives these Marines justice. They've waited too long, and let's do it as soon as we can. I'm going to object at this mo a moment, but I'm not going to quit on this issue if you want to continue. I want to work with you, so I do object. I do object, but I... Objection is heard. And I want to let my other colleagues uh, speak, but um, as the chairman mention I have a lot of respect for the chairman you can tell he's a good trial lawyer um, but you said I don't understand actually I do understand I understand a lot of what's going on here and unfortunately I understand the power of the trial bar that blocked a lot of this that's what happened we know it um, my colleagues mentioned two percent remember this is the Biden administration's recommendation not like they're enemies of the trial lawyers two percent to file a fee Okay, you can file a fee in your sleep. That's pretty generous. And 10% when, I'm, I'm not sure the chairman's read his own bill, but the Camp Lejeune Justice Act actually restricts the federal government from making traditional defenses in court, making the job of lawyers much easier and much less burdensome, which is a whole other reason you need 10%. 10% is generous. 10% is a compromise. So here's my question for the chairman, again, who I have a lot of respect for doesn't kick in for two years, but every single day, one of these Marines' families is getting scammed, and we all know it. We see it. Why the heck did the trial lawyer spend a billion dollars in ads out of philanthropy? No, so they can get even wealthier. So here's my request, and I hope the chairman will take it on. You're the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. We still have time before the end of this year. Bring this to the committee, mark it up. You do markups every Thursday to consider nominees. No offense to the nominees. U.S. Marines who are sick are a lot more important to address this right now. So if I can get the chairman's commitment to work with me and others who care about this, to mark up this bill, and you see it with us before the end of this Congress, and get it over to the House to get justice for Marines, not for trial lawyers, I would welcome that commitment from the chairman before the end of the year. Is that something that you would agree to, Mr. Chairman? I'll agree to work with you on this. By I the end of the year? I can't tell you that we're going to achieve it in three weeks. Oh, I, I think I, it's pretty easy that Biden well, Justice Department. 
I hope we can, but let's do it in good faith. And I, I'm willing to sit down with you and work on it. Anyone who's trying to exploit these Marines, their family, or others who are victims of this contaminated water that's been going on for decades, I have no use for them. But I do believe that in some cases, they need good legal representation. And when you cap the fees where you've capped them, good lawyers, frankly, are not going to accept the cases. And that means that Marine may not get his day in court and may not get a case presented that is really critical for him and his family. So let's try to find that happy medium. Let's try to stop abusing the abusing that's going on with the, if we can, uh, uh, the advertising. I've seen it. Everybody sees it. You can't miss it. It's everywhere. But the point is, let's, let's do it in a conscientious way, thoughtful way, and do it as quickly as we can. You introduced this bill almost two weeks ago. Uh, it is a significant change in the law. To think that we can finish it in two weeks, I'm not sure, but I will try. At least I'll, I'll give it my good faith effort to try to reach a place where you and I can agree. Well, I hope if you're a member of the American Legion or the VFW, you want to call the Senate and tell them to get this done by the end of the year, we'd welcome your phone calls. Welcome your phone calls. I hope we can get that done, Mr. Chairman. I know some of my other colleagues, Senator Tuberville, and uh, also feels very passionate about this. Senator Tuberville. Mr. President. Senator from Alabama. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to thank my colleague, Senator Sullivan, you know, for calling up this important legislation. You know, I have the pleasure of serving with him on the Armed Services Committee and Veterans Affairs Committee, and proud to join him in this effort. You know, the brave men and women who serve in armed forces know they might be asked to pay the ultimate sacrifice, but no person, no matter how selfish, joins the military willing to give up their health or their family's health because of toxic chemicals in their drinking water. Nobody does. Unfortunately, that's reality faced by many Marines who spent time at Camp Lejeune. And since the passage of the PAST Act earlier this year, we've seen unprincipled trial lawyers jump at the chance to take advantage of this situation. The bill we're discussing closes a loophole in the PACT Act that should not have existed in the first place. I have 500,000 veterans in the state of Alabama. I got on the Veterans Committee to help those people. We worked for almost a year on this PACT Act. It wasn't near complete. But at the State of the Union last year, President Biden gets up and says, we're going to get this thing done, and we're going to get it done quick. Nothing ha happens quick in this building, I'll tell you right now. And if it does happen quick, it doesn't work. We were probably three quarters of the way done with it. And last year, we were told we're going to take it from the majority leader in the Senate and said, we're going to take it. We're going to run it through. It wasn't ready to go because we had things like this that were going to be a problem. I voted against it. I caught heck from my veterans back in Alabama and still catching it. Till today, I'm still explaining why I did this. And I told them. It wasn't ready to come out. A $500 billion bill wasn't ready to come out to help the veterans of this country. It was going to have problems. And I told them, I hope I'm wrong. I am hope it all works. But here we are, just a few months later, and we got our first problem. This won't be the last. This will not be the last. One example uh, of this uh, Section 804 Camp Lejeune Act, while well attended and meant to be right, and right or wrong, this section doesn't include a critical guardrail to protect those it meant to protect. So and currently, bad actors are able to profit from this misfortune of veterans. And again, I'm hopefully we can, we can get this right. I mean, because uh, if this, and it's not small, this is, a, this is a defect of the bill that was rushed through for some unknown reason. But we're going to have other problems. But we need to correct this problem first. We're all sick of these dang commercials and all these lawyers making, the, making this money. So as a member of the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, I am committed to protecting those who protected us. And I hope we all are in here. This includes doing what I can to fix this PACT Act along with my uh, colleagues on both sides of the aisle. I'm disappointed my colleagues failed their commitment to protecting our veterans in this bill. And hopefully, we can get it right. I yield the floor to my colleague. Thank you, Senator Tuberville. And um, I just hope that um, our colleagues will do what's right for our veterans and get this done by the end of this year. And if you're a veteran or 
a member of the American Legion or the Marine Corps, call the Senate, call the chairman of the Judiciary Committee. I'm willing to work tonight to get this done. But we cannot delay. We cannot do rope-a-dope tact tactics here in the Senate to give the trial lawyers the money when it should go to United States Marines and their families. I also want to call on my colleague, Senator Blackburn. Mr. President. Senator, for, Senator from Tennessee. 